YouTube hasn't always been the most stable platform, and that's coming from someone who's been working on the site full time for about five years now. Now, we all know that companies, when they get big, they tend to get a bit complacent. They, they don't really want to make changes because the money keeps coming in. And the biggest thing that motivates change is competition. And YouTube has no competition. TikTok aside, the only other competition I could think of that directly tried to compete with YouTube was VidMe. They blew up when YouTube were at their lowest. I don't know if you remember the, the fabled yellow dollar sign that everyone was getting. Limited ads. You'd upload anything the most wholesome family friendly content and you'd still get limited ads anyway this curb stomp on youtube lasted about two months and then vidme fell off and shut down and then you had story fire which I i'm checking right now and somehow to this day it's still chugging along i think the only consistent uploader on there at the minute is mcjugger nuggets and he's the guy who literally created the website they even paid me ages ago to do a one-off video and i thought at the time okay great i love free money but like this isn't gonna go anywhere i don't think story fire is gonna you know last and yeah years later Later. Nothing. My point is, when companies have no competition, they get incredibly lazy. That's why any kind of change that the community wants for companies, it takes ages. Like, for example, when a YouTuber gets a strike or a copyright claim, they have to resort to crying about it on Twitter, publicly adding the YouTube account for them to do something. It's embarrassing, and no one wants to see you publicly crying on the platform. But again, I can relate because it's the only way to contact them. But guys, I'm happy to announce, just when I thought YouTube was getting good, they've announced another exploit. Another way to hack directly into your favorite YouTuber's channel and hijack their account completely. Now, YouTubers seem to be having their accounts hijacked to shill crypto scams forwarded by... <laughs> Elon Musk. I'm not joking that there are actual screenshots of this. It's not okay. I want to get this apparent right now. I don't think Elon Musk actually has anything to do with this. I think they're using him because he's, you know, a big figurehead. Whether you love him or hate him, pretty much everyone knows who Elon Musk is. I don't think Elon would be involved in a scam to hijack YouTubers accounts. You know, he makes enough money in stocks and in his company to probably pay his electricity bill, his grandchildren's electricity bill, and his grandchildren grandchildren's electricity bill for the rest of time. Now, the worrying thing about this hack is it seems to use an exploit that completely bypasses any kind of password or app authenticator you have. So even if your password is more complex than password 123, and even if you have an app authenticator, which is one of these apps you can download that gives you like a randomly generated code every 30 seconds that is impossible to crack into, there's still a way to completely circumvent that entirely. Now, this isn't new. It's been going around for a while, especially on apps like Discord, where people try to hijack your account to, you know, steal your Nitro or get your login credentials. I've even had this happen to myself. I've had someone send me a link making out there oh you're gonna get partnered on discord click this link and it looks so genuine you even see like you can see a preview of the amount of members on the discord server and it was like a hundred thousand it looked legit but obviously i'm never gonna click on a link ever in my entire life so i kindly told the guy to touch grass obviously it goes without saying never click a link from someone you don't know and even if you do know them there is a chance they could have been compromised so you should always be cautious there i've even seen these these scam links get so down bad it's almost like they try to use a confidence trick they'll message someone with a link to join a server which will hijack their account and they'll caption it something like oh someone on this server is talking about you maybe you want to see what they're saying <laughs> it's like you're going to shatter the ego of like some poor kid just to get his account hacked. Now, one of the biggest people who was exposed to this scam was McCreamy, a Fortnite YouTuber. And he explained that when he was hacked, he had nothing else to do apart from tweeting the YouTube account directly. It took YouTube over an hour to get back to me. Let me explain. When I say get back to me, I mean that they sent me a robot auto response, basically saying, well, yeah, we're going to try and fix this. Little did I know that this was going to be the start of a very frustrating and infuriating journey because dealing with these people was like talking to a brick wall. And this is like laughably bad because could you imagine turning up to work one day and no one knows who you are? They don't recognize you even though you've worked there for years. And then you just have Elon Musk wearing the exact same outfit you're wearing saying, I work here now. This is me. And then you go home crying and you basically resorted to tweeting at the brand account publicly, hoping that they do something. At Wendy's, please save my career. The worst thing is as well, apparently before YouTube took any kind of intervention, the Elon Musk live streams were going on for four hours. Four hours of Elon Musk shilling crypto. Th this goes to content creators as well, but I think we can all agree stuff like this with hacks and that only seems to happen at the worst possible human time. It's always... When you're about to travel on business or holiday, or when you're about to go to sleep. D does anyone notice that? They, it always seems to happen at the the most catastrophically bad time. I remember when I was doing like leafy CSGO daily commentary videos and I get a copyright strike at like three in the morning and I wouldn't be able to sleep. Like the anxiety 
would set in and I just I, I couldn't stop thinking about it. But nowadays I've became so apathetic to it. When I wake up and I get a copyright strike, I just think that's fine. Whatever. I'll deal with it later. And then I'll just go back to bed. <laughs> this as well goes out to content creators, uh, you know, without saying I don't know why it's not on by default, but please turn on the block link feature. So when people comment on your videos, any kind of links or hashtags are instantly removed. I have no idea why this isn't on by default. All you've got to do is go into your creator studio, then settings, go onto the community tab and scroll all the way down and just check that little box. Again, I, I have no idea why it's not on by default because anyone that comments a link is usually pretending to be a Mr. Beast account that links you to a crypto scam and hijacks your account. And then the other half are linking you a YouTube video that no one cares about anyway. <laughs> This goes for anything, obviously, even emails. Even if the email seems completely legit and genuine and it says it's signed by Susan Wojcicki, never click a link in an email. I cannot think of a single example where like a sponsor or a company couldn't explain themselves with just words and pictures. I don't know why they'd need to put a link in there. There are like so many exploits out there. I even heard this one on Discord, I think, where it's like someone will send you an MP4, like a video, but the video will like buffer and then you'll want to click on it, hoping that it opens on like Google or something so you can watch it. And that's it, you're hacked. <laughs> Now, I don't want to fear monger and make it out that it's inevitable. There are steps you can take, you know, change your passwords every couple of months, use an app authenticator, and preferably as well, keep like each social media to an individual email, like one for Twitter, one for Facebook. I don't know who uses Facebook. Also as well, always use an app authenticator like Google, the thing I mentioned earlier that randomly generates passcodes. You don't want to use your phone for stuff like this because I remember H3H3 got hacked a couple years ago. It's so notoriously easy to call up a phone provider and for them to just pretend to be you. So these hackers were able to acquire my SIM card from T-Mobile itself, from our carrier. They called and impersonated a T-Mobile employee and you know, T-Mobile being the gracious uh, Hosts that they are wanted to provide a, a great service to them by giving them our fucking sim card i'm not even joking i called up my phone provider once and i basically you know pretended to be someone else I, I called up they asked me for my crucial information like address and stuff i said i don't know and the guy just let me in anyway he just didn't care guys i'm gonna say something very brave here very thought-provoking there's some problems with youtube okay there's a couple problems with youtube